Hey there, folks. Long time no uh, PSP. Am I right? Uh, so, anyway, I've got a uh, new-ish mod. Um, this is a two-parter here. Uh, it looks like we're installing an IPS screen and an HDMI out um, interposer board, I guess, as it were. Uh, the IPS screen, I have done a video on a similar mod to this before. I'm guessing it's about the same thing, just with a different ribbon cable. Um, I know that you can get LCDs manufactured uh, overseas. Um, and the LCD itself will be the same, but you can have them slap a different ribbon cable on there. So I'm guessing that's what that this is. This is probably the same LCD that I that I did that other video on, except that the uh, connector on here has been modified so that it's just drop in. But also there is this board with the four extra wires and the ribbon cable here. Um, you plug this end into the PSP and then you can plug the screen in here and then this gets routed through and then you plug the converter board in on this side here and that allows you the HDMI out. Uh, it is my understanding, but this is a total guess, uh, that these are two standalone mods. You could do one, the other, or both if you want. I will be testing that out. Um, but otherwise it should be relatively simple. It's probably going to take a little bit longer just because I'm not as familiar with PSPs as I am with, um, better consoles like the Game Boy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I've got a donor here that we're going to be pulling apart and using. This thing is fully functional, uh, with two exceptions. One, the joystick definitely needs replacement. It's not just missing the cap, but it doesn't go right, it has some pretty major drift. And the other issue is that the power switch does not work. Uh, so unfortunately this thing has gone to sleep and I have no way of waking it up because the power switch doesn't work. But I can take my Pandora battery here. And if I get that off, I need external power for this. We can put the Pandora battery in. That should auto boot the console and I can plug it in. Maybe there we go. And then switch back to my regular battery and uh, just reboot the device. I have a magic memory stick in there, of course. Um, otherwise it would have just booted straight to the OS, but it is working all is well. Happy shiny. I did try playing some games on it, and yeah, everything seems to work aside from the joystick and the power switch, so I'm okay with that. I did just go ahead and um, reset this thing with the Pandora battery and the magic memory stick, and just set it up fresh just to make sure we're all good to go. Uh, so this bad boy is on 6.61. It's got custom firmware installed already because the... Um, HDMI board will be replacing the UMD. So if you want to load your physical media, which why would you, but whatever. Um, those are mutually exclusive, unfortunately. I wonder if the UMD even works in this thing. Uh, but anyway, this one, which we will also be using as a donor because it is very clean. Um, unfortunately, I can't get this work. Yeah, see, the UMD d does work. Let's eject that so I don't have to listen to that. Uh, this one, unfortunately, I can't get working. It already has in here a magic memory stick. I will go ahead and eject that. And if I pop the Pandora battery in there, you can see it does auto boot the console, but I just get a green light and nothing else. And if I insert my magic memory stick, the console just powers off. Um, I can't get this thing to, I can't get this thing to behave. So um, rather than waste time troubleshooting this, I'm just gonna uh, cannibalize it for parts to make this one nice and pretty and shiny. And um, hopefully, I did not check this in advance, but hopefully this one is a compatible motherboard. Um, 
if I'm interpreting the instructions properly, there are three compatible motherboards out of at least four. Um, I think I ran into this issue when I did the original video on uh, that other screen there. Uh, I ended up having to swap to a different PSP, but that's okay. We'll get this. We'll get this figured out. And uh, forgive me if the lighting and audio is a little bit different than usual. I am trying something new. That something being, oh, I bought a new phone. But I don't want to get into that. That's not the point of this video. So we've got the one screw on the bottom, one screw in the battery compartment, one screw on the left shoulder button, another screw on the bottom left, or right since I have it flipped over, and then the last screw is somewhere under this warranty void sticker. I don't remember where exactly, so I think I'm going to have to peel it up. I think it's like right in the middle, give or take. Oh, it's missing a screw. Okay, let's peel that up. much care about not ruining this. Oh, that's right, there's two stickers under there. Not like I'm ever going to send this thing in for servicing. This is, or was, a uh, Japanese model anyway. And I am not in Japan. So Sony wouldn't service it even if I wanted them to. And it was still under warranty. All right, put those five screws out. I believe it should just pop apart. Yeah, not too bad. I'll lose that button. Okay. Wow, that's disgusting. Uh, let me grab the old toothbrush here. At least get the loose dust off it. certain this doesn't need to come out, but I'm going to pull it out. Just make my life a little bit easier. Make the same strategy I took last time and get this screen out of here. Maybe.
That's why you don't use your nice pliers for stupid st or uh, tweezers for stupid stuff, huh? Oh, I know you can focus on that. Come on. Oh, I guess I can't focus on that. That's unfortunate. Well, either way, you'll have to take my word for it. I just totally destroyed my tweezers. These brackets are monsters. There's almost definitely an easier way to do this. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. But that's why I'm taking apart the nasty one first. That's what I was missing. That was held on with adhesive. Okay. And then that should slip out. And then that should slip out. And once we've got these out, we can remove that, save it. Um, it does work. There's zero reason I can't just pop this into another PSP. Wow, that is really blown out. Okay, my bad. That's, that's cool. That, that's a neat feature. I'm going to have to figure out whatever that, that is and turn that off. Um, this is a sharp LCD. I had seen something a while back about um, certain region consoles shipping with certain LCDs, uh, but I've only ever seen sharp LCDs in these things. Uh, this specific console, I believe, was a Japanese model. Um, for better or worse. I don't know where it actually says any of that nonsense, but I did buy this off Yahoo Auctions, so it's probably where it's from. Uh, let's see what this... And this sticker is all in Japanese, so yeah, that's, that's probably what that is. All right. Yeah, another one here. That one's also Japanese. Okay. I think once I reset these things, it uh, resets the region in there anyway. Oh, that's interesting. This one's got a differently oriented sticker, so hopefully <laughs> these models are swappable. Okay, that's fine. We can continue here and let us double check that this board is among one of the compatible ones. I'll just go ahead and throw that up on the screen now, but I have to make the pictures bigger so I can see them from here. That is not that model. It is not a model four. Is it a Model 3? It's not a Model 3 either. But it does look like a Model 2. All right. So I believe we'll need to short out... Oh, you're killing me. I don't get any autofocus. Oh. All right, you're killing me. Um, I believe we need to short out these two pads down here all the way over to the right uh, right above the connector uh, but I will test it without beforehand um, is that an easy fix probably not wonderful all right before I test this I need to get a working power switch which means pulling apart this one too and I'm just gonna punch right through this label 
because that seems like the easiest way to do this. Actually, I suppose I should just reshell re the entire thing. That one is much cleaner on the inside, though. I'm sorry for all the white balance issues. I don't know how to fix that. I will address that at some point, I promise. But I don't know what's actually causing that issue right now to address that. balance when it gets all blown the heck out. Okay, fine, we'll start at the top. Set that aside. And this is not the same model, which shouldn't be an issue, but out of curiosity, this appears to be, is that, no, it's not a four and it's not a three. Okay, well, I guess this is not a compatible model which unfortunately I can't test because I can't get this one to boot. But that's okay. Let's continue taking this thing apart because I want to put the motherboard from the blue one in the casing for this one. I should probably pause while I do that, huh? Oh, you guys don't mind the long video. You can skip ahead. Oh, the question is, I don't know what order to even do this in. thing has to come apart anyhow uh, because we got to get the UMD out and I'm fairly confident these consoles are you, you got to take the whole thing apart to get to the UMD anyhow there are two screws still holding on here
sure if adhesive or if I missed something. Ah, okay. It's part of the eject mechanism. I don't think that was supposed to come out that way. But it's okay. We don't need that anyhow. Now, normally you don't need to disconnect this here, but I am reusing this portion of the this motherboard um, and I might as well reuse the DC jack so I don't have to take any of that apart and I know the DC jack works but I can't get that out okay keep going One, two, just the two. Okay. Unplug the speakers for now, if I can. I'm afraid of ripping those wires out of the connector. That's it, aside from this probably Wi-Fi cable that runs across the front of this thing. Oh, another ribbon cable here. Probably junk all over the back, because why wouldn't there be? It is Sony and they uh, make the most complicated assemblies. Unfortunately, I think this has to come out.
between the adhesive, the screws, the clips. All right, that's up. Pull the antenna out of here. Oh, I just got my screws out of order. All right, and that comes out. And I don't see any immediate reasons why this thing isn't working, which is quite unfortunate, but not entirely unexpected. thought it would be a little bit more obvious how to remove the UMD once I got here, but it is not. It's not actually attached. Uh, it looks like it's got to come out from the back, but I've got to get the door off first. And I don't see a way to do that. Maybe there's something hiding under here. Nope. Okay, I need to go request outside assistance. I will be right back. Okay, easy enough. I made a mistake. Uh, so I had to unclip the cage. I'll show you a little bit more when we get to the blue one. Uh, and then once the cage is unclipped, it is quite literally just a matter of prying the darn thing out. And I did not realize that. Can I do that with my tweezers? Not without scratching it. Of course, I can just try flexing it. Nah, that's a bad idea. There we go. Trusty old spudger. And then the whole door comes off. We'll need that door, but I don't believe we need the rest of this. Probably want to remove the spring too. Excellent. And this whole thing should come off with one, two, and four shock mounted screws maybe there it goes and um, I don't know if this one actually works but Maybe it does. I don't know. Save it for something else. Probably nothing, but something. And let's see how this works. here. This goes in in such a way that uh, it replaces the IR. There's a little IR window right here at the top that, as far as I know, wasn't actually used for anything in the PSP. Um, and then this just goes here, maybe? Yeah. 
There's clearly some, uh, some hardware in the way though. Well, we've got this disassembled enough. Let's go on, move on, do this one. Uh, so, to get the UMD out, looks like we need to remove just this long screw in here, and then this screw over here, and then I think there was one at the top as well. Maybe two. We can remove the door though. So the door comes out, you gotta snap the cage out of here. Both the door and the cage are a little bit flexible though, so you just gotta look in there, see where that tab is, and then try and flex the uh, flex the two apart. which of course was a lot easier on the one I did off camera, because why wouldn't it be? Eh, maybe there's something I'm missing. Usually is, isn't there? Let's try the other side. Or even we can try doing it backwards. Pop off the bottom first and then, yeah, slide off the top. That's even easier. That's all we need. Excellent. Now, unfortunately, we do still have to tear this thing down quite significantly, even if I wasn't doing a motherboard swap, uh, because there are some solder points that I need to get to, and uh, ooh, that is also part. I don't know if we can get to them while it's assembled. That's not too bad though. Ah, if only I hadn't damaged my tweezers. Eh, I think I'm gonna have an easier time if I wait till it's actually disassembled to try getting this out. Or I can employ violence. That should work too. Excellent. 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 Let's keep 
going and do the swap. Oh, that comes out a lot easier when there's no UMD holding it in. Oh, yeah, this needs to come out. I don't need to use it, but it does need to come out. Oops, that came unplugged. Maybe that's why my power switch didn't work. Because this was just not attached. <laughs> well, that would explain a lot. Unfortunately. Not going to reuse it anyway, just in case. Oh, nuts. Okay, so I'm going to have to fix that now. Because, of course, this is the working motherboard. <sighs> Sorry, guys, this is going to be a long one. I suppose I could leave it, but then I can't charge it. Because you can't do 1,000 PSPs over USB. Okay. Eh, maybe I'll get lucky and I can just slide it all back in. Now you know, that is a very delicate connector. And unless you want to be an idiot like me, don't reef on it. Well, there we go. It's probably fine. There's no LED here, though.
Yeah, huh, huh, huh. It's working. Two birds, one stone. A working power switch. And I fixed the uh, thing that I just broke. <laughs> we need to remove this metal shielding. percent sure what this is supposed to do but I've never been a fan of mods that require doing stuff like this but, so be it we have this out we have to remove this IR LED which can be desoldered but they say to just do one of these numbers and all right sure um, I don't even think the motherboard is damaged from that said than done. How'd that even get in there? What kind of wizardry is Sony pulling here? Helps if you kind of like stretch the plastic up away from the board and then kind of angle it back and then you can push it out the bottom of the IR LED. And we'll reinstall that trim piece. there. Oh, I forgot this part. All right, we're getting there. I don't know how this is supposed to get in there. It doesn't say to cut that screw post off, especially since there's a hole that lines up. It almost looks like you're supposed to screw that down into that screw post. There are 
hole there, hole there, and hole down here too. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it does say you're supposed to cut that out. Oopsie doodle. Okay. Well, let's do that now before I reinstall the motherboard. probably a way better way to do this. And by probably, I mean definitely. But if it works, Also need to trim down part of this piece. Looks like we just need to make some of these supports flat. That's it. Snap that back in and do a test fit. Oh, it feels like it wants to go. I don't know what it's hitting though. No, I just didn't trim enough. That's what it's hitting. We need this bottom part nice and flat. This can go in. Maybe. There we go. There we go. That ain't too bad. In fact, I think I can screw that down right now. And then we've already got a nice little cutout for the little little HDMI. And I can put the touch sensor right behind the uh actually I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> it's probably a better place for that. Okay. Okay, we're almost there guys. Need to wire up three cables. Down here in this area. We 
and get these plugged in. Or if I ruined them though. Unfortunately, totally forgotten where all the screws go, especially with this mess I made. Excellent, excellent. This goes this way. All right, and we just never take that out again. Oh, but I want to take it out because that's, that's gross. I'm going to risk it, even though it's foolish. Thanks, Sony. Oh, I think I put that in the wrong order. Oh, oh no. Goes over top, doesn't it? There we go. Thanks, Sony. Fixed it. To get all the way through this build just to have a non-working joystick or a button or some baloney all right i think this was the working one because this one's still plugged in quite a bit of weight savings with that umd gone um I know PSPs have absolutely abysmal batteries and the aftermarket ones aren't that much better. I think this one's already bloating. Um, but with the UMD drive gone, you do have a little bit more room for uh, activities if you want to throw a bigger battery in there. Like I, I ended up doing that on my 2000. Um, of course, it ate that battery, so that battery doesn't even work anymore. It's detached, as you can see, but whatever it does work technically I 
That's weird. Does that go on the outside or the inside? It feels like it should go on the inside. do a quick test make sure it is still working indeed it is my concern is just this connector because I already broke it off at least once all right so now let me get Wow, oh, these are interesting. Those are two totally different parts. That's bizarre, okay. It's interesting how the face buttons are the same the uh, d-pads are not well I'm guessing the less gross one is the one that went with the black faceplate oh wait shielding first huh that these need to be reinstalled, but what else am I going to do with them? Nope, that screw hole's gone. That's the one we cut out. Is this one gone too? Yep. Oh, we can probably just attach this to the battery door. That's a nice thin piece of plastic. Leave that off for now though. All right, we're almost there, I promise. Definitely should have attached this first. Oops. That's not a different part, is it? No. Why am I having such a hard time with this then? Who knows, because it went in really easily that time. All right, we're almost there, I promise. 
when reinstalling this frame, double check that the little transparent block is still there for the um, joystick because that is necessary for the operation. And we're almost there. Um, I totally forgot to do those four, three wires. Let's do those right now. Uh, so those three wires, I believe, are just for audio. So we have L, COM, and R. So probably left channel, right channel, and then ground. Uh, let's see. Wow, that's, that's a choice, okay. Probably makes the most sense to do them one at a time. <sighs> Where's my wire? Here it is. I don't know why they give you four wires, maybe extra? I don't have the same motherboard revision as what they are showing off, so I don't know which is which. Oh, yes I do. I'm just looking at it wrong. Okay. So, I don't know, pay very close attention to their pictures. It is very easy to get mixed up in here. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna solder up the common. And I'm gonna do them one at a time. should be able to feed these, yep. Excellent. And normally I recommend testing this stuff before soldering it together, but unfortunately we can't really test the audio without soldering in the audio. percent do not recommend soldering in the shell but kind of past that point unfortunately I don't know if this can be assembled easily if you don't solder it while it's in the shell all right next up that was common L is the capacitor right next to that Hard enough to get to. Oh my god. Looks incredibly easy to short that on the ground plane right next to it, too. Be exceptionally careful.
go. That was L, I think I just did. I think I might have to pull that shielding one more time to get the R solder point. Yeah, I do. Uh, that's okay. Third tries the charm, as they say. At least there's only four screws in a clip now. Oh shoot, I did the two on the back. All right, six screws in a clip. All right, last solder point is Hard to get to. Not too bad. And this last one goes to R. And that should be it for the soldering. Again, it should just work plug and play. The soldering is only for audio. Um, and it's not like PSPs don't have an audio jack on them, so. If you want to mix your own audio, that's fine too. All right, we're in the home stretch. Gonna get this thing plugged back in so I have some mower control. Maybe. Yeah, I guess this is why in the instructions they uh, don't ever 
or say to disconnect this. Not the easiest to plug back in. Ain't too bad though. Just gotta approach it from the right angle. All right, so before testing out the new hardware, I am going to slam a battery in there and we're going to plug in the original screen and make sure I didn't actually break anything. should just work. I said, there it goes. <laughs> Ta-da. audio but that's okay <gasps> oh no okay I guess that happens when you uh, switch your housings without switching your card. Still, the lack of audio is concerning. Not sure what I did wrong. But the console is working, so. Mostly, with no joystick plugged in. But as you can see, that is not the Not the best screen. It's not bad, genuinely not bad. Um, portable consoles generally have pretty good screens as far as like viewing angles and contrast ratio and all that go. Uh, that being said, the original PSP screen is somewhat infamous for all of its ghosting. Now, it's entirely possible that me wiring this stuff up has borked the audio and it's not going to work until I um, finish wiring up the mod, but let's keep going. Now, I'm going to try the new screen, just bare into the board, no adapter, nothing. I'm fairly certain it will work with one little exception. I think we still need to short that point out. That is a mistake that I made last time I was exploring these kits. I never did that point. Well, I did. I went back and did it later. But in the original video, I never did the point. Come on, get in there. There we go. Oh my god. Oh. Wow, that is dangerous. Whoops. Be careful you don't do that. I had the uh, touch sensor 
scrunched up inside the battery connector. All right, excellent. So if you don't do, okay, so the new screen is more or less um, plug and play. It just kind of drops in. You don't actually have to do any modifications to the housing itself. It has all the clips in the same place and everything. It's the exact same size. The connector is the same. The only difference is you have to short that point out. If you don't short that point out, the, the image itself is offset on the screen. So if you notice, there's a little bit of a black bar down at the bottom and then right up at the top, it's cut off. So to fix that, we need to short those points. And if I follow my lead last time, um, I'll, I'll just do that in a different video. Uh, but now uh, we can get that done right now. I highly, highly recommend disconnecting the screen, um, or at least just shorting this out in advance before you even get stuff plugged in. But I'm doing it this way because I trust in my ability to solder without destroying this thing. And in the off chance I do accidentally totally destroy this screen, I do have another one. All right. This is also a lot easier to do without the shielding in the way. And, uh, actually, my tip does not fit with the shield in the way. So I think the play is... I either gotta take all this apart again, or I gotta switch tips. I'm thinking it's gonna be a lot safer if I just take this all apart again. As much as I don't want to. There, what do you know? Now there's plenty of room to work. I think it's probably easiest to just solder a fuse in there, to be honest. You know what? I'm in a particular kind of mood. Let's do exactly that. Unless I knock my light over. Actually, nah. I don't want to have to go find a fuse. Oh, and I can just take a wire and that across both pads and solder it down. And then that's it. And 
then once you've got it soldered, the trick is not to clean it up because as soon as you try, it's just gonna stick to your iron. I lost my tweezers and my flush cutters. That's it. Easy peasy. All done. Didn't have to waste a fuse in a place I did definitely did not need a fuse. Audio looks happy. Alright, I think we're good. Someone's up. Hello there. Now, I plug this screen in. Yeah. Even without the adapter. Should just work. doesn't feel seated properly, but it is plugged in, so. Now, do, 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 do. wait, that's, that's Nintendo. But there you go, see, it's working. Oh, holy cow. I can't get this battery out. I accidentally wedged it. Ah, that's why. Whoops. <laughs> All right. So now this screen has to come out one more time. That's slipped out and last piece of the install right here so I'm fairly certain that goes like that really that doesn't seem right I guess it is I'd say it probably makes sense to throw it under the shielding, but if you do that, then you won't be able to access the part we need. Well, this gets plugged in here. Maybe. So ferocious. Him. 
heat these tight connectors. There is almost never any good way to get leverage on these things. They are supposed to be zero insertion force. That is the ZIF part of these things. backlight in directly, it doesn't need to go through the adapter. I definitely should have ran that through first. Because and then you gotta kind of fold that into an S shape and then you can drop the screen in. That's it. My totally mangled touch sensor. I'm actually gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna stick it right on that edge there and then fold it over. And the hope is that I can just actuate it through the door. Otherwise, sticking it to the door itself might be a good idea. Ah, that screw. That screw holds the door in. Both of them do. Ah, I forgot to put the door on. So now I've got to pull this apart again. the screen. I said it has all the clips in the same place, but it doesn't actually have any clips. These screws are not necessary aside from holding the battery door in. I can omit them otherwise. I'm gonna leave them in though. Why not? That still opens if you need to get in there, but chances are you won't. This one comes with the full gasket that I accidentally just messed up. But I will try my best. It is a lot easier to keep that center bit in there so that this thing keeps its shape. 
I'm gonna wing it. Oh, great. Gotta love when that happens. What do you do to peel when the peel fails? This dust gasket, um, well, it's a gasket for dust. You probably want to install it. The intent is to keep dust out of the console once assembled. And by out of the count console, I mean out of the screen at the very least. It is incredibly sticky. So once it's on, I think that's where it stays. I could have done a far better job at that. I'm forgetting something, huh? Tea bag. I suppose it's worth mentioning. Uh, probably should have mentioned it earlier, but um, obviously, if you want to reshell your PSP, now is as good a time as any. Also, as of current date, um, the aftermarket for PSP reshells is absolutely horrible. So I would highly recommend, if you're buying a PSP for this, which whether or not I recommend that is an entirely different conversation. If you're buying a PSP for this, just spend a little bit extra and get one that's already clean. You're going to be so much happier than if you decide to reshell it. I think we're almost finally at the finish line. Um, for some reason, my screen is still offset. I don't know why. I did actually do the uh, jumper. I don't know. Maybe I've just got an incompatible motherboard or something. Maybe I did it wrong. Who knows? Uh, make sure you follow the instructions. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, but either way... Ah, I've got audio now. Everything seems to be working. So let me go ahead and set the date on here because I'm probably not unplugging it again. Uh, today is the 11th and it is 3.34. All right, so as you can hear, everything's working. Um, this is the new screen, not the original screen. Uh, let's, I actually want to try something. Theme settings. Uh, 
I want to set the color to that awful silver color and see if it's any more visible. Because I've got here a stock PSP 1000. That is also set to the silver screen. Um, as you can see, one of these is much more visible than the other. Oh my goodness. Theme. Was it classic or original? I don't remember. Probably original. Yeah, just to get an idea. Yeah, original. And then, oh. Okay, those weren't set to the same color. But now they are. Just to get an idea of what the uh, colors look like across the screen there. Um, not too different. I don't necessarily have a preference, but the viewing angles on the stock one kind of suck. Um, the other one, when I did uh, the original screen mod, um, the screen in the donor seemed to be a little bit better uh, than what's in here, at least as far as viewing angles are concerned. It's not too big of a deal because realistically it's a handheld, so you're always going to just angle it towards you and it's gonna look fine. Um, but the viewing angles are a lot better on the replacement. Um, not too bad. That's a terrible theme though. I don't know what this is and why it does that. But those are all terrible. Uh, oh, well, this one doesn't have a date set, so that's why. Um, we can fire up the game here. I should almost definitely mute that. just in case. Um, but same sort of dealio as last time. The colors are a little bit more muted, per se, um, but there is more... Hmm, is there more contrast? Now that I'm looking at it. Looking at it through the camera and looking at it in person are a little bit different. Um, I don't know. You tell me. You be the judge. From this screen alone, they're both fine. Genuinely fine. Um, however, this one should have significantly less ghosting. So once we get in game, you'll see this game in particular um, looks especially terrible on the original screens. Uh, oh, that's interesting. The background there that it just flashed up for a second was a little bit more visible on... Oh, no, are you kidding me? I thought this one had a working joystick. Again! Again we have this problem. It works as long as I'm hitting stuff, but... Oh, that's terrible. And of course the weather effects are a little bit different for each. But if you just look at the, the legs of the character, you can see how many like after effects shadows there are on the original one, whereas on the IPS screen, the replacement screen, it's a lot better. The response is just so much better. Um, so for that alone, this is a much better screen. Um, but other than that, I, I'm not sure I care for the other changes. Um, like, yes, it's different, but is it better? I can't actually say. It's fine. Of course, this one has rain in the overworld, so it's going to look different. But yeah, there you go. Um, I will link to the other video that I did on this. I did a few more comparisons with uh, 2K and 3K models as well. Um, but I think in this particular instance, it only really matters what it looks like compared to a 1K because, I don't know, a 2K is still going to be... You know what? Screw it, let's just... Oh, 
Let's swap them out. Uh, so let's get a 2K in here. And you'll have to forgive me, I have very few working PSP batteries. Um, there's no memory stick inserted. Yeah, because it's in the PSP I just put away. So this here is a 2000 model. Um, my personal preference, as far as models go, if you're going to get a PSP, 2Ks are generally the least amount of hassle. You can see the 2K is brighter. Um, oh, there it goes. Three, four. Ooh, but that wasn't maxed out. That was at the minimum brightness. <laughs> at max brightness, the replacement 1K is a lot brighter. I'm gonna make this test a little bit more fair. Apparently you can't change brightness while it's loading. There it goes. Yeah, it looks about the same. Oh, and now this one's raining. Of course it is. Oop. So we'll do that walking test again. And you can see there isn't... Oh, no you can't because I messed that up. Let's go back outside. Over here this time. You can see there is still less ghosting compared to the 2K, but it's not nearly as bad as the 1K was. Um, personally, I think this is fine. This is still objectively better. What is going on? This thing's a piece of junk. This is why you don't reshell your consoles. Um, yeah, it's... There's a difference, I'd say. Especially side by side, it's noticeable. I don't think that I'd be able to tell you, like if you were to give me one and then give me the other, I don't think I'd be able to tell you there's a difference. Or at least I'd be able to tell you there's a difference, but I couldn't pinpoint what. Side by side, yeah, I could see that there's less ghosting, um, but otherwise they're both, again, pretty much fine. Huh? Yeah, that's what I think at least. Uh, let's kill this. And I need my memory card. And last but not least is the 3000. I do not have a street or a go to compare against. Oh, that probably had the game on it. Oh, well. Uh, personally, I don't like the 3000 model because for whatever reason, there is quite a bit of interlacing with the 3000 screen. It's fine, and if you're into that, then so be it, but the 3000 screens are quite a bit brighter than the earlier models, but the IPS still goes brighter. <laughs> and yeah, looking at these through the camera again, I can tell you that they're different, I just can't tell you what's different about them. Like, I mean, obviously the color balance is a little bit different, but you know what I mean. And of course I am just testing the one game, so. Your mileage may vary. This scene, I can tell you the 3000 does look better. Looking at one screen using the joystick for the other. Walk 
go. And then walk to the side. And you know what? Honestly, the uh, IPS has st has less ghosting still than the uh, 3K. Don't pay too much attention to the colors because, again, this one's raining. Oh, now this one's raining. <gasps> oh, they're the same. They're even set to about the same time, so I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's just different. Yeah, I don't know. If you know what you're into, I guess. Take your pick. Um, I've I've heard that the Go has the best screen quality of the bunch, and I would certainly believe it. Um, not only is it a later model, it's slightly smaller, which should give it a little bit better pixel density. These screens are horrifically low resolution, and they just don't really look that good in most cases, um, especially if you're used to something modern like a smartphone, but uh, it's certainly usable for what it is. I, yeah, you know who you are if you like the PSP. I don't like it, but I suppose this one isn't that bad. I think I'm a little bit flavored by um, that 2K that I have because that was my first PSP. I bought that thing and then I bought a shell and then I rehoused it almost immediately and I've hated it since. And I just can't bring myself to put it back together. I don't even think I have the parts to put it back together. I've just got to replace it. I guess that's what that 3K is for or even this 1K. Uh, but anyway, that's probably not what you're here for. Let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in. I'm going to bring the sound up. Is there no off? There it is. Let's just go with ambient noises for now. I'm going to turn that all the way up. And then... That's loud. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And then it just works. So I'm going to go ahead and mute the computer. Actually, before I do that, turn the volume down until it stops clipping so that the audio isn't totally destroyed. And, uh, and I'll turn it down a little bit extra. And stop monitoring that so we don't get double audio tracks. And here we go. I'll try, keep playing. You can see what the output looks like. So there isn't really a whole lot to configure the um, kit just kind of works. You just plug it in and it outputs a 720p-ish signal, I believe. Um, actually, no. PSP should be a standard refresh rate, so it should be an actual 720p signal and not the kind of sort of 720p that a lot of Game Boys do. Um, so what I mean by that is it should be 72060. Um, Game Boys do 720, but they're, well, the Game Boy kits, they'll do 720, but they are, uh, like 59.7 instead of a full 60. The refresh is a little bit weird. Um, but this thing, since PSP's stock do output to a, uh, TV, the, uh, refresh rate is a little bit more sane. Oh, this isn't three, so there's no banshee there. Um, 
yeah, not too bad. There are no real controls for the kit. It just kind of works. You just plug it in and it does its thing. But there is that touch sensor. Tapping it does fuck all, but if you press and hold, you can toggle between the three screen modes. Uh, I believe that was a one-to-one -one scale. Uh, now we have it stretched. Maybe this is a 1.5 scale. Uh, I'll have to check the math. I'll, I'll put some overlays up or something because I don't actually know it offhand. And then the third display option is, there it is, a full screen. Uh, so realistically, you'll probably have it set to full screen. Don't matter too, too much. Uh, but otherwise it, it just kind of works. Um, yeah. It's a PSP still, so the resolution itself is going to be quite low. Graphics kind of suck. Ooh, that's what I get for fixing the cord and not paying attention. But, you know, it's, it's usable, right? It's really not too bad. These were my favorite cars playing through this game. Because they're always very easy to get, aside from the mafia that shoot at you when you take one from them. Um, but because they're fast. Yeah. Until you do that. I don't know. You get the idea. It's not too bad. But anyway, once you've got the PSP plugged in, it's... You know, the whole UI is projected. Um, you don't need to, like, you don't need to get it into a game or anything. It's just there. It just, it just works. Ta-da. Uh, yep, even my mod menu works. And wow, that is a lot easier to see on the external display. But yeah, neat stuff. Um, I think that's about all I've got. I think I need to cut this off here because this video is going on way too long. Otherwise, um, I've got a pile of PSP parts that I need to reconcile or just get rid of, because realistically, I'm probably never gonna fix that thing, and the housing is all gross anyway, but whatever. Uh, that's a me problem, and I'll figure that out later. Um, unfortunately, my screen is still offset on the console itself. I'm fairly certain that's a motherboard incompatibility with my particular unit. If you're interested in one of these kits, disassemble your console first and make sure your console is one of the compatible versions. Um, the listing will have pictures for all of the compatible versions. You can tell just by the display connector or I don't have it on this console. Maybe, maybe it's on this memory card. Uh, you can probably use the PSP ident software. I doubt it's on here either. Yeah, no, just more games. Maybe I can get a... Maybe I can get some info in the PSP tool. About system info. Uh, oh, that's interesting that it still identifies as a Japanese region console because I've overwritten this thing with uh, US firmware which is why O is back and X is go for me, but. Uh, here we go. I have a TA-086 in here, which I thought should be compatible, but clearly there's an issue here. Um, yeah. I don't know. This is for that software, okay. But yeah, 
it just seems to work. Now, um, regarding the display, let me go ahead and unplug this again. And I'll kill that overlay so we're just back to the overhead again. I'm going to go ahead and power this bad boy off. And unplug it so I know when it's off. And power it back on. I don't know why this happens. I don't know why it does this. But it powers on to a black screen. The console works. You can hear it booting. Uh, if I plug in HDMI, the screen switches on. And... So does HDMI, but then I can unplug it and use it untethered. I don't know why it does that, um, but because it's doing that, I don't mind so much that my screen is offset because this thing is effectively at this point consoleized. Uh, the only thing we'll have to do at this point is add an external controller support, which I'm not going to do in this video and I'm probably not going to do anytime soon, but um, someone has already beaten me to the punch and actually made a mod that does that. Uh, his handle is Orange Glow. I will link it in the description. There is a GitHub with all of the PCBs that you need to make and all of the code that you need to flash to, I think it's just an AT Tiny, uh, Atini, AT Tiny, whatever. Um, pretty relatively painless mod, uh, but it replaces the buttons on the console itself. So if you want to do that, you're only ever going to be using it consoleized. But, you know, if you have an HDMI output, that's really not the worst thing in the world. Um, especially since it does not charge over this cable. If you want to use TV out, um, you'll want to plug it in as well anyway. Um, unless you have the, the fabled perfect battery for PSP, which I don't think there is. But anyway... I think that's about it. Um, you've still got your UMD door if you want for whatever reason. I don't know what you'd be doing in there. Um, it probably makes sense to... Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. I have no idea anymore. Last time I did a mod on a... Ah, that's what it is. Okay, so when this sensor, when this switch is up... The console thinks the door is open and it doesn't try loading anything from the UMD, which is convenient because there is no UMD to load from. Um, if you were to leave this sensor down, the console would think a disc was just inserted and it will hang as it tries to read. Um, not doing so much right now, but I bet if I reboot it, it'll get hung on start. Well probably going to get hung anyway because of the HDMI. So yeah, everything was working as far as the screen goes, except that it just doesn't come on unless I plug that in. But you see, holding the sensor down, the console just kind of hangs. So if you release it, catches right up. So that's fine. Just be cognizant of that if you do use this extra space for anything. Try and avoid this switch here uh, or just remove it entirely. I think it should work fine removed as well. But otherwise that's about it. I don't I don't know what the pricing on this mod is. I'm guessing all said and done it's probably about 50-60 bucks. Uh, the screen itself is really really inexpensive. Uh, I went over this in my last video. Um, that mod, you know, just just the adapter ribbon and the screen, it was like less than 10 bucks. Granted, I had to order from Taobao, so with the agent fees, the double shipping, blah, blah, blah. Um, all said and done, it cost me about $30 to get two of them, I believe. Um, I don't didn't necessarily recommend it at that price, but those things have since popped up on AliExpress and they're quite a bit easier to get a hold of these days. Uh, this one is from One Chip. It looks like the same exact LCD to me, except that they've changed the connector on it so that it actually plugs right into the PSP. And as you saw, when you plug that screen directly in, it just works as long as you do that, um, short those two connectors out. For whatever reason, with this plugged into the adapter, 
I have some issues. Um, it doesn't, I, I have to plug in HDMI just to use this thing, uh, use the internal screen, which, I mean, again, it's really not the end of the world because if I'm gonna HDMI mod a console, I'm just gonna use it over HDMI, right? Like, it's fine. Um, that's a quirk that I'd really like to see fixed, or hopefully it's just my unit that is bugged. Um, I'm going to assume it's just my unit that is bugged because I've had a handful of problems, quite a few of them as a result from me re reshelling this thing. Um, my audio was related to the fact that this audio board, you know, the one with the headphone connector on it, was not compatible with the motherboard that I had in it. Uh, so, this audio board is perfectly compatible with the dead uh, PSP mainboard that I swapped out of here. So, I should have swapped that too, but whatever. Um, that was at least one of my incompatibilities. The other one, for whatever reason, is the, the screen offset is not working with the mod. I'll look into that. I'll probably leave a pinned comment or something in regards to what I find out, but... As is, just, you know, keep in mind those quirks. I don't know what the price is, so I can't say whether or not it's worth it even at that price. I'm going to guess it's around $50 to $60. And if you want an HDMI output, then, I mean, what what are your choices right now? Um, this. You can still use the composite output. I don't know if PSP 1000s do composite over this port. I think they do. I think it's 1000s and 2000s that do, but 3000s don't. Don't quote me on that. Um, either way, you can look it up, though. Uh, oh, 3000 definitely does, otherwise there wouldn't be that symbol. Um, and this is a 1000. I don't know if this does or if that's just microphone. And 2000 probably does, yeah. So... I'm going to guess that it's just 2000s and 3000s that do output, so if you want screen output on a 1000, I guess this is what you do. Uh, is there no video setting? Let's see. Maybe they're not exposed if nothing's plugged in. Or let's try the 3000 here go on a quick tangent before I end this. Eh, no, it just doesn't have... Ah, connected display. Okay, there you go. So yeah, there's native display out on the later models not on the earlier models, and just not HDMI, it is still analog. Um, I believe these do component and composite though, so that might be pretty nice. But if you don't really want to mod yours, you can just buy one of these, um, track down one of the cables, and, and go that route. I have no idea how much those cables are, so if those cables are stupid expensive, then I can see why that might be a issue. But Either way, there you go. There's HDMI. The HDMI portion is fantastic. The actual portable console portion is a little bit less so. But I guess if you want a consoleized PSP, you can grab one of these to get your HDMI out and then um, check out Orange Glow's GitHub repository to take care of the controls. You just plug in a PlayStation 2, 1? I don't, I don't remember if it's a 1 or 2 or both or either. Uh, but you just plug in a PlayStation controller and it just it just works. Um, you can probably combine that with like a Blue Retro or something or whatever those are called and get like a DS3 or DS4 controller hooked up. That'd be pretty neat. Um, or you can go with the PSP Go and that supports Bluetooth controllers and um, display out. They're a little bit more expensive, sure, but... Once you get a clean PSP donor, the mod kit, both of them, um, and get it all assembled, you could have also just bought a PSP Go and the, the cable, and 
Anyway, I don't know. Choices. Um, do what you want, I guess. Whatever you think will work out best for you. There's certainly multiple options. But if you want HDMI, this is the only way I know of to get HDMI specifically directly out of the console without running through another converter. But uh, I guess it's still technically a converter. It's just on the inside. I don't know. You get the idea. I, I, can, I can keep going, but you get the idea. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I think that's about all I've got. I will go ahead and throw some links in the description if you want to check this stuff out. Um, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way to check out. I don't normally do PSP videos on account of my dislike for them, uh, but also there aren't too many mods for them. Um, I could change that, but I just, I don't, I don't feel like it. If, if you're genuinely interested in the games that the PSP has to offer, I got something for you. Buy a PS Vita instead. Right? They already come with way better screens, usable batteries, you can soft mod it, and this thing plays everything that this plays. And then some. It's great. It's cool stuff. This is my USB-C modded one, of course. I should, re I should move that port, put it here, replace that useless port. I don't know. Either way, you get the idea. PSP is a PSP. PSP is even better. That's probably dead. Yeah. Um, probably Homebrew's Evolving. Last I heard, there was a pretty decent PS Vita emulator for Switch. That might be worth checking into. You can get a Switch Lite through the Vita emulator on there, and then you can run PSP through the Vita emulator, and I'll be happy shiny. Um, for games like Grand Theft Auto Liberty, Liberty City Stories, when you run them on the Vita, there are mods to actually run them at the Vita's resolution instead of the PSP resolution. So, higher resolution. Mm. Um, Vita doesn't support TV out that I know of, but the PSTV does. Huh? 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 Anyway, okay. That's all I've got. I'm going to get out of here. Link's in the description. Um, you can watch the older video if you want. Just heads up. I did mess it up and I did not realize at the time, so it's a two-parter. Um, and it's an older video of mine, which I have a hard time watching my older videos, but I don't know. It is what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, neat kit. Catch you all next time. Hey there, folks. Uh, so it's been a few days. I got some uh, updates on this thing, so let's have a quick addendum and discuss that. Three points I want to cover. First, totally forgot to cover this during the video. Um, depending on where you get this kit, it may or may not come with this conductive glue, as they call it. I, I highly recommend not using this. Um, it, it certainly looks sketchy being, you know, the, the syringe with the hypodermic needles. Um, I'm sure it works fine enough for the intended purpose. Otherwise, they wouldn't bother including it anymore. But if this sort of thing knows, or if this sort of thing looks appealing to you um, because you, you're a little intimidated by soldering, then I'd, I'd highly recommend just passing on the mod for now. Maybe start with a solder practice kit because this is not going to make things easier for you. If you're not experienced and comfortable with soldering this is not a crutch for for the work that you need to do with something like this i'm sure this has a time and place but a psp hdmi mod is not that time or place um but anyway yeah i'm i'm sure some aliexpress stores are going to be including it with the kit um retro game repair shop included it with their kit to me just for shits and giggles but i have it under good authority that they won't be including it in the kit that they actually sell. Same kit, just without that. Anyway, two more things I want to cover. Um, first, let's start with the easy one. 
I spoke with the vendor and we have come to two conclusions here. First, as you can see, my console is still not booting without the um, internal display coming up. We have discovered that that is due to a mistake that I made during install, um, but in my defense, they never actually called this out on the instructions. I'm hoping that changes sometime soon. Um, I'm expecting it to change now that we've worked out a solution to this, but let me grab a screwdriver here. And my console is on, but my screen is not. I'm gonna take the screwdriver and jam it in this port just enough to physically move the port and you can see my screen comes on. It's not that plugging HDMI in. Jesus, I'm sorry. Um, it's not that plugging HDMI in is triggering the screen to switch on. It's just that plugging, plugging in HDMI disturbs this switch enough to clear the short on the IR LED below it. Um, so I'll need to take this apart and um, insulate that switch or that um, port just to uh, fix that issue. Which brings us to the third issue, which is the offset screen. I showed that it works, you know, the screen is properly offset uh, as long as you short out those two pads and install the screen directly. If you're using the HDMI kit, <laughs> that's apparently an oversight and the two aren't explicitly compatible unless you're okay with having that gap. I'm told that they're releasing an updated ribbon cable uh, to address this. Um, so if you already have one of these kits, you'll probably need to swap out that ribbon cable not the whole kit, just the ribbon cable itself. But that leads me to a point that I brought up probably hours ago in this video at this point. Um, if you have one of these kits, like you already have it, you're stuck with the features you get. There are no kit updates. You have to buy another kit to get the updated features of the new kit. So if you have this thing, um, it is occurring to me that I brought that up in the N64 video, not the PSP video. But same same thing. Uh, to get that update, you would have to buy a new kit. So if you're watching this video, I'd recommend waiting, though I was told that um, they'll have the, PC, the new PCBs within 10 days, and that was yesterday as of filming. Today is not February 1st, but it is in fact October 17th. So by the end of October, the new kits should be shipping. We'll see. Um, but otherwise, bear with me just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get this pulled apart and um, we'll get that insulated. Okay, so I was able to get it disassembled enough to slip the motherboard out and I can get to the back of the uh, IR LED area. So I've just got my iron fired up and... I'm gonna smooth out some of these solder pads from where I trimmed the LED off. Uh, I figure this will give me the best chance to make it nice and flat. Adding fresh solder to that to give me a known surface to work from, and then I'm gonna use the braid. While trying really hard to not destroy the uh, button. You're not supposed to scrub with the braid because you can rip the um, the solder mask up, but eh, I think we'll be fine.
All right. And ideally, Captain would be what I use here, but I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, masking tape here because every tool is a hammer, something like that. Or when you have a hammer, every tool looks like a nail. I don't know, something like that. You get what I'm saying. It's gonna be good enough though. Let me get that in there. Get the edge cleaned up and then I will go ahead and get this reassembled. You can see the uh, HDMI port is right there. So that's what the board has been resting on. Hopefully just that little bit of insulation is enough to, to sort this out and uh, we'll go from there. Once I get this thing reassembled, I will be right back again. Okay, quick interjection while I'm reassembling this thing. I decided to have a uh, poke at it for funsies. Um, when, when the conversation with the vendor happened uh, regarding the offset screen, they made it sound like there was just a simple fix, like they just overlooked something on the ribbon. Uh, so I decided to start poking around it with the multimeter and I could see that with this thing in continuity, when you short out this connector, which sorry, it's going to be a little bit hard to see, uh, it shorts out pin seven, there it is, pin seven on the, uh, LCD connector, which was not shorted with this plugged in. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and removed my bridge and replaced it with just a straight wire. So those two points are still connected. So pin seven on the motherboard is still connected. Uh, but then I just ran the other end of that wire to pin seven on the new LCD connector. And now that's shorted to that. So when I have this thing reassembled, we'll see if that works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a break, um, and by take a break I just mean stop filming while I reassemble this, and then we'll take a, we'll take a better look at the, um, at the, the, the bodge I did, and if that actually works, then we'll discuss it, and if not, you know, just don't worry about this little guy, and, uh, it won't be a problem. Alright, I believe we're, uh, finally about there, um, while reassembling this thing, I of course lost a screw that I thought was captive that I think I just flip, flicked out of here. So, um, whoops, but I'll find that later. Um, I think this should take care of both of our issues though. Let's try it out. Comes on, that's a good sign, I think. Maybe. Ah, uh ah, -huh, uh -huh. See, I have the screen, uh -huh. and you can probably already tell, but it's no longer offset. What do you know? So yeah, it's just that, um, whoops. It is just that seventh pin, I believe it was. Um, just get that on there and everything should be good. 16. 43. Oh, it's so late already. But there you go. Now my screen's not offset either. I've got HDMI in there. I just plug that in, get HDMI out. My internal screen is working. Um, again, that is with that bodge on pin 7. Which you shouldn't have to do, but here we are. So I guess if you've already got one of these kits, well, that's a relatively easy fix. Um, Definitely not happening with this nonsense, but if you're comfortable soldering to a zero, a 0 0.5 millimeter pitch flat flex cable, then um, yeah, well, the fix is pretty easy. Um, and yeah, just insulating that port was all that I needed on here. Um, probably hard to see in there, but you could see that blue painter's tape right uh, right on the motherboard that that port is rested up against. So that was that. Was that. Um, so hopefully they will instruct their, or amend their instructions to include 
a step for insulating that port because it definitely needs to be insulated with this kind of install. I'm surprised I overlooked that, but most of all, I'm surprised they overlooked it. Um, and they're going to fix their ribbon cable. If you already have one and it's already offset, well, you can always just throw your original screen in. You can do that fix that I said, or wait until October 26th at the earliest and um, buy a replacement cable. I don't know any vendors that are going to stock only the cable, um, but I'm sure they exist somewhere. I don't know. It's got to be a thing, right? Um, anyway, glad I could get this fixed. I'm, I'm glad the uh, vendor of this kit actually came back with useful information, even though they weren't very upcoming or forthcoming. There we go. They weren't very forthcoming about the ribbon cable issue in the first place. Um, but just that bodge is enough to make it compatible with the IPS screen that they said it was compatible with. Um, otherwise, it just works on the stock screen. Um, or you just don't really need that little itty bitty portion of the screen that's missing. It certainly looks better having it, but very, very few games put points of interest along those top eight pixels or whatever it is. Because, well, it's just bad game design to put points of interest that far away from the center of the screen. Um, like, ideally you want people's focus in here. Which is why, generally, the more unimportant elements get flushed out towards the edges of the screen. Um, not to say that in Grand Theft Auto, for instance, the time is not important. It's just not something you need to reference regularly. So that's, that's all I'm trying to say. I suppose I don't need to ramble, though. I'm sure y'all know all of that already anyway. Hit the jump. Ah, I wasn't going fast enough. Oh well. But as you can see, it's working. Uh, two simple fixes and um, Bob Jonti. Uh, like I said, the manufacturer of this kit has said that they are getting uh, replacement ribbon cables made, so this shouldn't be a problem if you're looking at this. Um, like if you're watching this video deciding, you know, hey, should I get this kit? Oh, well, it has this problem. No, probably doesn't. That was very likely only the, the first initial batch that will almost entirely be sold through by the time this video goes up. And I'm sorry about your bad luck. If you ended up with one of those kits, talk to the seller. Um, maybe you can arrange a replacement ribbon cable or at the very least a discounted replacement ribbon cable. I don't know. Um, I don't work for this company. It's not my job to, <laughs> to test these things or, or work that stuff out or, or even help them for that matter. So, um, I don't, um, but they seem to have it figured out. So I'll let them deal with it. And, uh, otherwise I think that's about it. Uh, like I mentioned in the, uh, first two hours of this video, um, thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this kit my way to check out. Um, they should have a few of them listed. At the time I'm making this video, they only had the handful for testing. Um, by the time they get stock, they will of course have the fixed stock. Uh, and it will probably be in stock by the time you see this video. Uh, so go ahead and check the description. I will have links there. Um, other PSP videos, at least the last time I did one of these IPS kits for the 1K, um, links to Retro Game Repair Shops, shop if you want to check one of these things out for yourself. Um, and overall, I I guess it's, it's, it's all right. My opinion is, oopsie doodle, um, my opinion is improved upon this kit now that I have those two things fixed. Uh, so now that the console is totally usable without having to jam something in there every time I boot it, that's, you know, that's an improvement. It wasn't necessarily a problem, being that I really only intended to use this thing consoleized, but being able to use it handheld is 
a significant improvement. That's pretty good. Um, on that same note, the screen looks a lot better when the image is in the proper place. It just, it does. That's a lot better. I am disappointed that I had to point it out to them for them to realize that it was actually not working. Um, but they say they're fixing it and I'll just have to trust the process. Uh, so that being said, I guess if you want to HDMI mod your PSP, this is probably a pretty decent way to do that. Um, I was mistaken earlier. I did look it up. PSP 1000 models. I don't know why I'm doing this again. You, there, there is no video out on them. So if you want video out, this is the only way to achieve that on this model, as far as I can tell. The 2000 and 3000 series models, as well as the Go, um, support component and composite out, like just from the factory. So that's pretty nice. Um, all of these pins down here are just for a media remote, because that was a thing back when these came out. Um, smartphones, you kind of have it easy now with the microphone and, and the single button. Uh, maybe you're Maybe you're uh, ritzy and you get the two buttons, um, or you know ultra ritzy and you get the three buttons. But media controls got a lot more complicated on devices of this era. They had like their own dedicated LCDs and I don't know, a whole bunch of cool stuff. That's all this is, um, just a media remote. But on 2K and 3K models, it was also video out. Um, the cables themselves are not they're really not that expensive and since it supports component out you can get just ones that plug into the port on the 2 or 3k and just output hdmi via component and you can do 720p via component so quality is probably pretty comparable um maybe one of those these days i'll have to grab one of those cables and do a a, a more explicit comparison um but I'm not planning on doing that, not anytime soon at the very least. It's just something that might happen to happen in the future if I do more PSP stuff, which I'm not planning it, but I'm not saying it's not gonna happen. But anyway, I think that's it. I think I, I should end here before I keep playing more Grand Theft Auto. Um, yeah. I've said all I need to say. Links are in the description. Thanks to RGRS. I covered the three things I meant to cover, so I think I'm good. Sorry for the tremendously long video, but everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and, well, my usual modus operandi, as it were, is to cover everything and, um, you know, let you guys decide what's important and what's not, because sometimes I might skim over something during an install and just like totally not think twice about it. Like I would have installed that jumper wire on the ribbon cable without a second thought. And I, I almost did. I started rolling the camera again just to, just to capture that because you know, that I, I do stuff like that all the time. So sorry, this one's a longer video because I, I tried to include all of that and I'm just not as familiar with PSP hardware. So sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to, to get in there and do what I need to do, but I think we got there in the end. So thanks for watching. Um, thanks for being patient with me and um, have a fantastic day. I'll catch you all next time.